Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is kind of sort of my uh, literary favorites of 2019 tag. It's not really a tag unless you want to run with it. <laughs> uh, I'm cribbing it from parts of uh, something that uh, David the Poptimist or David at the Poptimist did um, last year called the Booktube Booker Book Tag, which <laughs> I personally love that name, which is largely about uh, recounting your favorite releases of 2019 or near 2019 or 2018 for last year. Uh, I don't want to go into all my favorite releases of the year book-wise. I already did a couple of uh, blog posts about that uh, during the Goodreads Choice Awards, so I'll just link to those down below. But there were a couple more broad questions that I thought were interesting and other things that kind of caught my eye this year, so I thought I'd just uh, pose some of those questions and answer them for myself. <laughs> So first I want to talk about my favorite new booktube channel that I found in 2019, except I'm going to uh, uh, step over into AuthorTube for this one uh, and talk about uh, the World Anvil uh, channel. Uh, I found out about World Anvil through um, Jenna Moresi, who's a, a famous author tuber. Uh, world Anvil is a world uh, building site, basically, for uh, both people who do RPGs and people who uh, particularly right in science fiction and fantasy, frankly. Uh, if you want to uh, make a Wikipedia-style uh, world uh, sort of encyclopedia for yourself and keep things uh, in check that way, or if you're just one of those people like, you know, Tolkien or someone who loves world building, <laughs> this could be a great site for you. Uh, and on, you don't even have to actually be a member of the site to watch all of these free videos. Uh, this uh, website is, uh, you know, local run by this uh, couple. Uh, I believe they live in the UK. Uh, and so they do all of the coding and all of that, and they also do all of the promotion. And uh, so you can have that nice homey local feeling. Uh, and the, and the uh, channel is just uh, really fascinating. They do lots of interviews uh, and uh, go into a lot of depth about uh, what it means to create a world. Uh, and all of uh, the details you really have to think through to, you know, realize how complicated uh, the world has been, <laughs> culturally and otherwise speaking. And then if you want to throw in some magic on top of that, woo! <laughs> uh, recently I watched a video where Janet, uh, half of the team, uh, did a, a review of uh, the world-building aspect of the Amazon show Carnival Row. Uh, so uh, that was really interesting to watch. Uh, so I will link... Uh, the channel down below. Next I want to talk about my favorite new author that I'm following on Twitter and I'm going to go with uh, Emily or E.J. Wenstrom who uh, is a local to me author. She lives in DC and I first heard about her uh, through the Maryland Writers Association conference last March where she did a panel on world building as well. She is a science fiction uh, author. She has a series of books, I think kind of more fantasy really than science fiction. Uh, and it's actually about a golem, which uh, always gives me a bit of pause because uh, she's not doing it from within a Jewish context. And, uh, you know, I don't necessarily like how the golem has become a more generalized monster, but uh, I don't know. I liked her panel so much that uh, I might give her books a try. Uh, they weren't on sale, alas, at MWA. But anyway, uh, she... Um, writes on her Twitter, uh, she, about, uh, writing topics, like, you know, the 5AAM Writers uh, Club hashtag, uh, and she also does a lot of uh, freelance work, like for Book Riot, and also for, um, I think it's DYO MFA, for Do Your Own MFA, I'll link that site down below as well, just, uh, for, uh, advice and such for, uh, writers, uh, trying to get up their, uh, social media platforms, which for marketing purposes is, generally considered a must of uh, the modern day and age. And it's just so nice to follow someone local, also somebody who's published with a smaller publisher, I think maybe a mid-sized publisher. Uh, just a reminder that there's all sorts of success stories out there. Uh, uh, my favorite uh, booktube uh, event or so, I guess, of uh, the year uh, is, uh, I guess I just want to talk about the booktube prize yet again, although I'm not sure I can say anything different than I've been saying all year as I've gushed over uh, Robert at Barter Hordes' uh, new project. This was the inaugural year, uh, and, and it uh, 
dealt with uh, picking uh, the best literary fiction book that was published in 2018 as picked by uh, the booktube community or various judges of the booktube community. And it really got very popular because uh, Robert opened up uh, the judging pool much wider for 2020. Uh, and I believe he has uh, more than double the judges and uh, he opened up a nonfiction category. And I'm so excited to be participating uh, Officially, I mean, part of it, of course, is about reading books that I want to read or challenging myself to read books in nonfiction and literary fiction that maybe I would have overlooked. But uh, certainly the biggest uh, draw for me is to have more community involvement. Uh, and I'm really hoping uh, already, actually, uh, I've, you know, gotten more subscribers and a lot uh, had a lot more interaction with people and found new uh, channels to subscribe to. So it's been great in that regard. And uh, I, I'm looking forward so much to next year. I hope I have <laughs> something new and exciting to say. <laughs> in local to me news, I think my favorite uh, literary news is that uh, my uh, local neighborhood of Silver Spring got its first uh, official uh, bookstore in a long time. Well, technically, uh, Loyalty Books uh, opened as a pop-up uh, over the holidays last year, and then it uh, went away for a while, and actually it opened up another store in D.C., and then this year it came back to a new storefront in Silver Spring, and just recently they signed a three-year lease, so I'm hoping this will be permanent, and I'm just so excited to have a uh, verified uh, place to go to geek out about books and to look at all the new releases and all of that. Uh, this picture I have up above uh, might be different next year. I think they're going to do a little renovation, but uh, I'll link to the uh, article uh, I read about this down below. Uh, my favorite uh, literary adaptation on television this year has to be His Dark Materials, uh, based off of the, the uh, Philip Pullman books, which are uh, YA fantasy uh, books. Uh, sort of of the fairy tale bent a chosen uh, a chosen one narrative uh based in part off of uh, paradise lost and uh pullman's uh atheist uh, take i think on uh challenging the precepts of organized religion of a sort which perhaps is strange for me to talk about because i talk about judaism so much on this uh, channel and i am very uh, drawn uh, to religious and cultural judaism but uh I read this uh, trilogy 10 years ago and I just really fell for it. I think I, I fell for the main character Lyra and I think Pullman did a great job of um, talking about what it means to be 12 years old and I think that uh, he was very uh, purposeful in that because he wants to talk about this jump from childhood to adulthood and he wants to be pro-adulthood and pro, you know, learning and uh, pro- uh, having new experiences and not being afraid of uh, what religion might call sin. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, the major thrust of these three books. And uh, the first season, based off of the first book, uh, it's airing its finale in the U.S. Uh, the day I post this, hopefully. <laughs> uh, it's been up and down, I think. there's It's been a little exposition heavy. Uh, but uh, I, I think overall, I... Uh, I don't know, a lot of the feelings I had for, or what I remember from 10 years ago are coming back. I, I focused a lot actually on Lyra and her really shitty parents. <laughs> it was something that really got to me and uh, this is a major season for that. And uh, the, the woman who plays Lyra's mother, Ruth Wilson, is really, she's been really amazing. So I hope she'll have more to do in the next few years. But uh, anyway, uh, definitely looking forward to seeing this uh, go on. And finally, if my battery lets me, I'm near the end here, I thought I would uh, end with some uh, intro and outro mu music that I love from my fellow booktubers. <laughs> okay. it for me now. Hopefully I kept that short and sweet because I've been doing some crazy long videos lately and plus I have a bunch of uh, overlay images to add in post-production now. <laughs> I hope all of you are uh, in the middle of or prepping to have a wonderful holiday week, be it Christmas, Hanukkah, Solstice, Kwanzaa, what have you. 
if you're celebrating something, I hope it's a great one. Uh, and thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.